All right, welcome to another episode from the Chart Readers. A little bit of concern coming really across the sector too. I think I think if it was just stuck on Tilray, I would have been okay with it because last video I talked about it, I'll talk about it again today. I have no problem with offerings. I really, really don't. I'll go over my reasonings on that. Um, generally, the market reaction is a little bit bad, and you know we see a little bit of that here. But I think my concern got a little bit bigger when I saw CGC actually start to like slip below the lines. And again, we've seen it before. That's not really confirmation, you know what I mean? So hey, maybe I'm getting just a little bit worried for nothing, right? But we see it with ACB. We see it with AC. <laughs> we saw it with CGC. We see it here with ACB. Excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, high Tide, actually holding pretty well. Nice, I actually didn't know that one. SNDL kind of doing the same thing as the other ones, right? So I think, and then MSOS, I don't believe, yeah, look at that. That one's actually under four of the five now too, right? So if, if, if it was just contained to Tilray, given the offering, I think my thoughts would have been very, very different than they kind of are in this video. And yeah, I think a little bit of concern is definitely there. This time next week is CGC earnings, okay? Um, obviously, a political headline, something like that, is, is, is big for the sector. It should do real good things. I think in a week, we have what's arguably the most important thing coming up in the sector right now. I think CGC... If it does well, it should lift a lot. And, and when I say a lot, I mean the other tickers. It should lift a lot of the tickers. If it does not do good, that's gonna be a little bit concerning, okay? And then the last thing I am gonna talk a little bit about is the major markets, all right? So I'll do that when we go to the fireplace, but that's a, that's a scary candle, all right? Dow Jones, DJ30, that's a scary candle right there, right? NASDAQ, Comp Q, whoops, wrong letters, Comp Q. NASDAQ, look at that, that's a scary candle, right? So I'm never here to overreact on a single candle, whether it's a, a random little ticker or a major indice, but there are some things happening in the markets around us. There's a little bit of, of, of a concern in the sector itself. That has me a little bit worried, all right? So a little bit longer of open thoughts, uh, opening thoughts right there, but before we do go any further and I give you more of my thoughts and opinions, what are we gonna do? Same thing we always do, right? We'll take a look at the daily, and the weekly to see how these things are setting up short term. We have our five moving averages. There are horizontal support and resistance lines that I do draw manually myself. And then when we are done up here, we'll use the MACD, RSI, and volume as our lower indicators. Hey, really quickly, please, if you can, oh, I've been trying to like redo that. If you can subscribe to this channel, share this video online, comment good or bad. Hey, anything you can do helps so, so much with these YouTube algorithms. Let's get into the fireplace. So I'm going to start with a couple, I mean, really, I, I think I'm repeating a lot of the fireplace comments from, from last video, but I'm going to start with the offering comments on Tilray. So to me, I don't care about float. I don't care about share count. Those are those are important factors for a lot of people. And I'm not saying you should ignore them yourself, right? But in my trading strategy, I I, I, I don't care about that. And and with that comes the fact that you know offerings aren't a bad thing for me. I'm not disappointed when I see my share count go up because hey. I'm not even looking at the share count, right? To me, an offering is 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 guaranteed money in the bank, all right? When you go out and you make a loan and you you there, there are terms that are going to be better for the bank than they're going to be for the company, right? In my eyes, an offering, and again, obviously the company that's getting the offering isn't going to take a horrible deal, right? But I've always seen an offering being a place where the company kind of has the ability to write the offer and they just got to go find someone that's willing to accept the terms, right? So I, I've always seen an offering, knock on wood, be, you know, um, company or corporate favored, especially if they have a plan for the money. Because again, it's in the bank, they got the shares, they got the money, let's go execute, right? And and with, with, with this sector, it's generally an acquisition, right? Obviously, that's a complete guess. I don't even want to say it's a rumor because I haven't seen any rumors, right? I know a couple people mentioned that in the comments, 
But yeah, if I was to find myself with a good amount of money in this sector, I would go buy someone small, right? I would go buy someone maybe in Germany, right? Where that just became legal. Or hey, maybe in the US where you're anticipating some stuff happening or maybe this and that, right? I don't know. But um, yeah, it's just to me, the offering's not bad. The issue is, and I'm gonna say it again, a lot of people think it's really important what the share count is, what the float is, and when people see that rise, people people freak out, people worry, and you naturally see a couple red days behind it, right? So um, that's my, my in general offering thoughts. The one important thing to do if you're a long investor, go read the offering terms, okay? It's all about the details, and if the details are good, to me, it's actually a good thing for the company, all right? Let me know your thoughts and opinions on that. The other thing I'm going to talk about, I'm going to go go back into the charts and then we'll we'll probably come back here. So um, where is it? We want to come here. So I, I quickly showed it. And, you know, in the Discord, we actually did talk about it. I know Hot Fuzz threw out, I think, the first mention. One second, right here. So around 11 o'clock my time is is when it was at least noticed. And then actually shortly after, there was a CNN headline about the Dow dropping due to rape concerns, okay? Um, to me, and this is something we've actually been debating on the Discord, so I'm, I'm actually still bullish even after today. Because look, look at the RSI. Look at in the box right there. This is the S&P 500. This is an indice. This is not a random stock. It is mind-blowing that the RSI got to a 96 plus, all right? Day before 91. Day that was the day of, day after still a 90, right? Like to me, it makes sense that we needed to come down to 75. Like to say that the RSI was hot is an understatement, right? Let's come to the, the Dow Jones, the DJ30, right? A little bit uglier. I'll talk about the moving averages shortly, right? But again, this was an 87. 87 is ridiculous for most regular stocks, let alone for the Dow Jones Industrial, right? When we look at NASDAQ, you'll see the same thing, right? So look, things were really hot, a 92 RSI, right? So the dailies were concerning, and I think this is just the natural cool down that comes with it. The weekly is where I think I'm still comfortable. The weekly is where I'm still okay. I just need some better confirmations. Right, we're clearly over all five, but those are kind of three dojis and one good one. That's not really confirmation, right? SPX, SP500, that was a good one too. And I think this right here, excuse me, this right here is what was making me believe in the S&P 500 a little bit more. Ooh, excuse me, a little hiccup there again. And then again with that, but, but look, 63 on the RSI for the SP500 weekly, right? And then again, did I look at NASDAQ already? I did, whoopsies. DJ third Dow Jones right super healthy 52 and hey look this weekly was at a 90 not that long ago all right so it's done it went down it came up it seems like it's coming down I don't know if it's gonna come down more we'll talk about that we'll see and hey we can already see that it's been in the 40s before you can see like that's a decent like 40 something chunk so hey maybe a little bit more but yeah i can see this holding and, and and going and again i actually did like the other weekly so overall i don't want to go too deep onto the on the indices because that's not what this video is about right but you got to remember when we're looking at our little individual weed stocks our little individual whatever sector stocks the markets are going to matter right so just keep that in your back pocket Clearly, this one's lost the eight already, gone to the 20. This is just a lot. Oops, yeah, the last thing I'm going to say, we have not come down to the 20, but that would be a pretty bad fall if we copy that, right? So just keep that in your back pocket. I don't care about NASDAQ too, too much because we're talking about crops, right? So um, 920, I think, is a good place. 925, give or take. I think we'll move into Tilray really quickly again. If you can subscribe, if you can share the video, it does wonders with the algorithm. So, <clears throat> excuse me. There are a couple of things jumping out here, right? On the technical side, we are below all five. And generally you hear me say, break all five and fly, lose all five and die, right? We did slip into a negative MACD and we actually have red over green and red over green on both the MACD and the RSI, never a good thing. 
and volume once again has gone back under the 50 day average kind of struggling and living down here in that like 20 million 17 million 15 million range right so um <clears throat> it's concerning it is there are technical things that are not looking good um when all five moving averages are stacked, and I've been saying this for a number of videos now, you go to the top, you go to the bottom, you go to the top, you go to the bottom, and I'm not quite sure if we're just kind of living in this tornado of all the lines, or or it's something more, right? I talked about the offering. Offering generally brings a couple red candles with it. I don't think that surprises me. We're also coming into a long weekend, all right? I always call Friday a loser day. We're now including a Monday no trading, right? Like I, they're very much extremes, but imagine if a CFO gets caught embezzling or a CEO gets in some like sexual scandal, right? Like companies go down because of some really dumb human things, right? So it is scary to, to have your money on the table and physically be unable to do anything for four days, right? Well, three, I guess, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. But um, yeah, you get it, right? It's, it's, it's one of those things where I think I'm seeing more of that than than major indice concerns, but if the S and P 500 keeps dropping, that's going to be bad for weed stocks, right? And again, I I know this is a Tilray section, but like I'm seeing some concern here. Nothing crazy, but I'm seeing some concern with CGC. I'm seeing some concern with ACB. I'm seeing some concern with SNDL, right? I'm seeing some concern with MSOS. So it's it's one of those things, all right. The last thing I want to talk about is this double DEA candle. I think that's the best thing to call it, all right? So the first DEA headline, we come down to roughly 33% of the candle. We lose 66% of all that between there and here, okay? This time, after the Biden tweet day that got me excited, that got a lot of people excited, we have come completely below that entire thing. And we are now very, very much at probably the last 10% of this candle, right? Roughly speaking, that little, that little bit left that we're actually still over, man, that's probably less than 10% if I had to guess, right? Like it's concerning that we lost this DEA moment and we're very, very close to losing that. And again, that's echoed across all of these, right? So um, overall, I'm seeing a good amount of scary. I'm seeing some some concern on the indices. I think long-term it should be okay, but hey, maybe it's gonna be a little bit of a scare short-term. I'm seeing concern in other stocks in this sector. That's never a good thing, right? And this thing just had an offering, which again, though I kind of like it, the market tends to not, especially in the beginning, right? So Tilray is worrisome, right? When I look at the weekly, we have now lost them all here as well, right? The fifth one's up there. We just lost these three, right? Again, we're kind of playing this little crazy oscillation game. And even these three right here are pretty tight, but that's, that's, that's a little bit of a concern right there. I think the minimum, next week needs to come back to two dollars we really 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 need to get back into that where is that on the yeah we really 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 need to get back into the moving averages really soon okay look green 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 red 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 it might be a quick green 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 back up to that two that we need that's a that's a real possible like let me del i'll delete the line real quick but even back here red 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 green 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 Red, red, red. Hopefully we get that green, green, green back up, right? But we need to get back into the moving averages. Otherwise, it's been a while since we've talked about it, but we might be talking about 162 again, okay? Um, again, I still believe in all the DEA reschedulization good. I do, right? But I'm here living and dying by the lines. And, and that's what that means. It means putting what I know as an educated human, right? Like I'm, I'm putting news aside and letting the lines tell me what to do, right? So let me know your thoughts. Let me know your opinions, even if you disagree. So I'm going to combine ACB, CGC, SNDL, 
and I think MSOS, I don't know if I'm gonna move, no, I'm not, I'm gonna do MSOS on its own. I'm gonna do those three right there, all right? Um, really quickly, please, if you can subscribe to the channel, if you can share this video, it does wonders for the algorithms, all right? So with CGC, the story has been the eight and the 20 moving average, all right? I talk about these two lines on every single stock. I don't care if you're three letters, four letters or five letters. I don't care if you're making semiconductors or amazing technology. I don't care if you're farming tomatoes, you know, peanuts or some green plant that, that happens to do nice things when it burns, right? Like these moving averages are a stock's worst. You can just see it living under these two lines or it's a stock's best friend. And you know what? When it becomes its best friend, you just have to give it the credit that it deserves, all right? This is a real easy stock to bash on, it is. ACB, I think, is an even easier stock to bash on, and I say that with love, I really, really do, right? But, I mean, I'm just zooming out and showing the downtrends, and like, it's just, you know, is what it is, right? When the lines take over, the lines take over, right? And we've been giving it the credit it's been deserving. I think as I look at this ACB chart, as opposed to the CGC chart, we've slipped under the 20 a couple more times here than we have on ACB. And I don't know if that's a little, a, a little more concerning, right? But um, I would say these two candles back to back are a little bit concerning. CGC, you can kind of make an argument that, I don't know if I would call that a doji necessarily, but that's not that convincing a candle, right? But it kind of seems like we're probably gonna come to the 50 moving average here, right? Around 850. ACB, it kind of seems like we're gonna come to the 50 moving average around, right? Around 615, right? As I look at SNDL, kind of the same, ah, no, okay. I would say this is a little more convincing. And I think the bigger difference is there's a decent spacing between these lines. We lose the eight first, we kind of doji doji, and then we lose the 20, right? As opposed to CGC, super, super tight, kind of having to battle both at the same time. ACB, super, super tight, basically battling them both at the same time, right? SN, not ANDL, SNDL, chubby fingers, I apologize. It, it, it was that spacing that I think made this a little bit steeper. But look, right now it seems like all three of these are gonna come to the 50 moving average. Really coming down to the 50 moving average is probably gonna happen tomorrow. These aren't that big of drops that we're talking about to come down to the, the red line, right? From there, it's 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 a must hold and listen when we're on the other side of the coin it becomes so hard i mean just just look at it right you can pretty much see that 50 moving average is almost untouched most of the time right it is really really hard to break up from the 50. it should be as difficult to break down right? Like this 50 moving average line, we clearly broke it and confirmed. It clearly golden crossed the, the 100. It clearly golden crossed the 200. This is a friendly line. As a friendly line, it should be a strong line that helps us bounce, all right? But I'm kind of looking at the past and we lose it really quickly. I'm kind of looking at past goes. We bounce here once, yes, but there's a hundred and a 50 kind of stacked right there, right? We come to it again and it just kind of loses it even with like, I'm not sure how good, like right there, look at it, we just lose it real quick. I'm not sure how strong the 50 is on this one, right? That's the exact same thing I would do on these, right? I would back up and I would look, we lose the 50 pretty hard. There was no bounce on that one right there. Uh, that one was in rejection. Let's see if we can find a better one. Okay, we do bounce here a little bit. Can't really like take off on it. Um, and yeah, man, I mean, for the most part, that 50 is a, is a near impossibility on that ACB chart. Again, though, same thought. We golden cross, we golden cross. This is a friendly line. It should hold. If it doesn't, that's a bad fall down. I don't think that line's going to do much. And that's, that's, that's a no bueno, right? Even same with CGC. You lose that, that's a bad fall down, right? So to me, it's all about the 50 moving average. And really, given the gap down, 
I would be extremely tight, extremely tight with my flexibility on, on that line losing or not. Because again, we're talking about a potential drop from 850 all the way down to six something. That's not good. That's a 25% drop on top of whatever else it's been since we were at what, 11, right? So um, I, this is a must bounce. And again, obviously we have to bounce back over the eight and the 20. We just seemingly lost, right? So that's, that's the echoing comment across these three. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know your opinions. Even if you disagree, let's come in MSOS. And yeah, MSOS, I think is the one that's like, bothering me the most it really really is all right and i'm going to echo the double dea candles that i did on tilray all right real quickly please if you can subscribe and share the video oh it does wonders for these algorithms all right so let's start with the dea comment so this was obviously the first dea moment we go from all the way up here to actually most of the bottom of it. We actually gapped down below it on the worst of the worst, but we were able to at least close over it before we made the recovery, right? So this drop took the worst of it and it was actually worse than the Tilray drop because Tilray at least kind of held like 33%, right? So crazy to see MSOS drop from the first one. The second DEA candle was this, and the very next day we closed completely under it. That, that, I mean, I, 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 I love the lines way more than candle trading. Like there are people that move their money without any of these lines. They just look at candles back to back, maybe three in a row, whatever. I've heard of like the green, three green soldiers or I don't know. I'm, I'm just making, I don't know these names, right? But I'm not one of those people, but I know, and, and, and it's something I, I don't want to say I know. It's something I, I genuinely I believe and I've seen it work more times than not, right? But when you lose the day before, that's a bad thing, all right? Like you barely want to lose like 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%, let alone all of it, right? So horrible that these two DEA days did bad. We are now, so yesterday we closed at the bottom of the DEA candle, right? This big one, literally. This day opens at $8.86, the second line right there. This one right here closes at $8.86, the exact same number, right? Today, we obviously go well, 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 well below that. We actually go 8% lower than that, right? So it is horrible that we're below both DEA candles. It is horrible that we've lost four of the five moving averages. It is horrible that I'm my 50 moving average concern on the last one is the 200 on this one. And clearly, if you lose the 200, that's that, that's you lose a five and die moment right there, right? We've used this 200 before and, and pretty well. That was a good takeoff point. That was a good bounce. That was a good takeoff point. This to me is only the third hit, right? This was the break, bounce, bounce. I think we can bounce a third time. I normally get concerned by like the fourth or fifth one, but um, you know, it's one of those things where I talked about the, the, the markets, right? SP 500, it kind of looked like there was getting a little shaky. Got to see how that plays out too. Right. But yeah, concerning on the daily concerning on the weekly, right? Cause we're actually under it. I see, I see the red under the blue line, right? So we're going to confirm, but it kind of seems like we're going to come down here. And that is the last of the moving averages on the weekly as well. Right? So um, yeah, there's reason to be concerned here, I think. All right. And then let's wind it down with high tide, which actually seems to be doing a little better than the others. Um, I'm not sure if there's a reason for this. I would love to hear some thoughts and opinions. If there's some news that I've missed, I'm not seeing anything. I think a couple easy things are, look, this one's actually holding a positive MACD. This one's act now, look, it's not breaking the 50 day by a lot. And generally, you know, I, I, I get excited by that, but we were down here at like low 100 Ks. We're now pushing 500K and we're actually holding that, right? Like we're having days that are better, 
we're having a couple days that are worse, don't get me wrong, but like we're not back down to like 100K, 50K, et cetera, right? So I think the fact that volume is holding is actually, do, look, volume is king, right? Volume's queen for my ladies out there. And I think this holding, despite the rest of the sector falling, I think a lot of that is actually the volume. All right, RSI is not looking the prettiest, like the green is kind of struggling to stay over the red, I think, right? But so far, I'm gonna give the, the credit to this, right? Like, yeah, we're under the eight, but I mean, we're holding the 20, we got the 50 right here. I would maybe start worrying if we get into that 215 range, give or take, but yeah, easy to say that this is doing far better than the rest, right? Break 254, and obviously that's gonna be a really, really good thing, right? But um, Monday is a holiday. I, I'm assuming that Canada is going to still be trading, so this will probably be moving there. But yeah, obviously the U.S. Um, OTC tick. Oh no, this is this is Nasdaq, right? What am I talking about? Hi, Ty. Yeah, this is Nasdaq. What am I talking about? So yeah, the Nasdaq ticker will obviously not move, but it will on Tuesday. Friday, I generally assume is a loser day, so just kind of adding the long weekend adds a little hesitation to me, all right? But let me know your thoughts. Let me know your opinions. Even if you disagree, hey, thank you so, so much.